come to In Touch with TJC. Today is a fifth Sunday after Trinity, and we bring you love and blessings from God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in obedience to Him. You will eat the fruit of your labor. Blessings and prosperity will be yours. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children will be like olive shoots around your table. Yes, this will be the blessing for the man who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you live to see your children's children. Peace be on Israel, on TJC, on Ghana, on all of us forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We continue together as we sing from the amazing grace hymn now. Fill thou my life, O Lord, my God, in every part we praise. And the number is 22. to you from Tema Joint Church. And this is In Touch with TJC. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, 
We know that when we offend another, we offend you. We are aware that we have often allowed the shadow of hate to cloud our souls, hiding the light from our seeking eyes. We have said unpleasant and hurtful things to our brothers and sisters when they failed to live up to our expectations. Grant that we might find that spark of love that ever burns within us. The love that you have shown to us even when we failed you. Fan the embers of that love until it roars again in flames of love, peace, and reconciliation. Forgive us our sins and help us to forgive those who have sinned against us. Lead us into new life through Jesus Christ, your son, who died for our sins and then who reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord's Prayer, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. United Praise, just give us uh, two or three choruses. Thank you so much. We praise thy name, oh Lord, we pray, we pray.
Reverend Obobi to lead the second part of it or to continue. I don't think there's a first part and a second part. And whilst he walks in, we'll sing, Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love, 371. <laughs> I greet you all in the name of Jesus, especially in times like this. We are grateful to God for an opportunity even to share his word at this time. Without him, we can do nothing. So we are grateful to him that he has blessed us with his presence. And he has given us everything we need for life and for godliness. Shall we pray? You never give the promise that the journey will be easy. Your grace and mercy has Your grace 
mean by your grace and your mercy. And we are grateful for these mercies and for this grace that we have enjoyed up until this time. May the same grace keep us and may your presence be with us even as we think and even as we share your word. We thank you, Father, even in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, I would want to pick a certain aspect or a certain portion on a topic which involves encouraging others. Encouraging others. But I have an interesting twist to it. And those who know, know. Those who understand, understand. And the, the twist I'm giving to it is this. And I want you even to come along with me. It is simply put this way. You will never walk alone. You will never walk alone. Amen. I know some people are full of smiles and some people have started crucifying me wherever they find themselves. That's why I said those who know, they know. I'll share a word of scripture from Hebrews chapter 10. I'll start from verse 16. And I'll read through to 25. This is the covenant that I'll make with them after those days, declares the Lord. I would put my laws in their hearts and write them on their minds. Then he adds, I remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain that is through his flesh, and since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith with our hearts sprinkled clean from, the, from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You will never walk alone. Beloved in the Lord, I am certain each and every one of us would acknowledge how difficult, how confusing, how discouraging life has become these past few months. Our whole life is filled with uncertainties and many unanswered questions continue to bother us. We seem to have been hemmed in on every side, about to be crushed by the sheer weight or pressure that unfolding events bring to the fore. Day in and day out, we are bombarded with news items and pieces of information which only end up worsening our already confused state. Things have become so challenging that many are struggling in a big way 
trying to do what God expects of us. And the end does not in any way appear to be in sight. Pastors, members, leaders, the rich, the poor, young, old, and whoever, irrespective of stature, can identify with this. At least to some extent. In the midst of all these, it appears all potential helpers have disappeared. And we are all alone. Left at the mercy of predators. Is there any hope? Is it all done? Is it finished? We have been told time without number that life will never be the same again. And sometimes I must admit I hate to hear that because I miss how we're going back and forth and doing our things. But the big question is, if life is not going to be the same, will it be better or will it be worse? Our inability to find answers to such questions makes us, makes our already bad situation even worse. I'm not a fan of English football. And that is why I said those who know, know. But my attention was drawn to happenings these past few days. And the story of the eventual winners or winners in waiting of the European League. Don't think for a moment that I've been converted. I'm a diehard Accra has a folk fan. Phobia. And I'm not bothered whether we win or lose. But I find this situation really very interesting. They have had to pursue the title for 30 years, I'm told. Every year they came up, made every effort to annex the crown and failed each time in their attempt. This year, however, they finally achieved their aim, their second league title, 30 years after the first title they won in 1990. But what made a bigger impression on me is a song which was written in the 1940s, I'm told 1945, which they adopted as their theme song and from which they found or they derived their motto. This song made such an impression on me that I had to disturb the whole house this week with it, playing it over and over again. And poor children of mine who had other teams they were supporting in the English League wanted to strangle me, but they did not dare. For the purpose of this message, I will share the lyrics of the song with you. And this is what it says. When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high. And don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of the storm is a golden sky. And the sweet silver song of the luck, walk on through the wind. Walk on through the rain. Though your dreams be tossed and blown, walk on with hope in your heart. And you will never walk alone. You will never walk alone. Walk on. Walk on with hope in your heart. And you will never walk alone. And, and it, is, it was so beautiful watching these people as they celebrated their wing. And they had their arms around each other and were singing, walk on, walk on. You'll never be, you'll never walk alone. If there is any message I have for you today, I just want to give you this assurance 
Because in the midst of this challenge, in the midst of this COVID uh, pandemic, in the midst of all the job losses, all the, the losses that you, you are counting, some people wake up in the morning and they cannot get out of the bed. And, and up until now, I didn't know what it felt like. But when I was very young, I used to see my father early in the morning. Everybody would be up. And he would not be asleep. He would just be lying on the bed and just gazing at the ceiling. And I wondered what on earth is this man doing? You know, sometimes you are overwhelmed and you do not know where to turn. And so getting out of bed becomes so difficult for you. So all through the years, they have been motivated that every step of the way, they had company and will never walk alone. And this is the same that I, will, I wish for you, that each and every one of us would know this as we walk, that we would never walk alone. Even more so, I'm here to assure you that no matter the challenges you may be facing now, you can be sure of this one thing. God has made provision for you. So you will never have to walk alone. In fact, if you are with God and you are alone, then it means that you are alone by choice. Because by design and by God's plan, you are not supposed to be walking alone. God has made that provision. I am not talking about just any team. I know as I started, some people were rejoicing, the Lee Poo fans. The man you guys started strangling me, the Chelsea people are eyeing me. But I'm not talking about those things. If I wanted to talk about a team, I've told you already, I'll be talking about phobia. However, I'm talking about God's special team, his treasured possession. No member in that team walks alone. Why? It's simple. By redemption and God's intervention, we are not alone. God is with us. Like any man, the child of God will face storms, but will not be overwhelmed. He will go through the fire, but will not be harmed. The water will not sweep him away or her away. Isaiah 43, verses 1 and 2 says this. But now, this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob. He who formed you, Israel. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. This is the word of God. Matthew 28, 18 to 20 says this. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So what am I saying here? This is something we can acknowledge. This is something we can confess. This is something we can live by. Our God is faithful. If he said it, he will do it. You will never walk alone. Hebrews 10, 23 has this to say. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. For he who promised is faithful. This is the God we serve. Again, by divine provision, we will never walk alone. John 14, 16 has this to say. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate. Other version says, comforter. To help you and be with you forever. You will not walk alone. You will never walk alone. The only thing is to make sure that you position yourself aright. It is possible in the midst of this provision, you could still walk alone. It is possible even as a Christian, 
after God has introduced you to this wonderful package, you still walk away and walk on alone. But the promise is certain. You will never walk alone. God himself has promised to be with you. No matter where you find yourself. He says, an advocate to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth. The world cannot receive him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. You will never walk alone. By fellowship with the body of believers, we will not walk alone. When we become children of God, what God does is that he makes us a part of a unit. So we become a part of a body. The body of Christ. As he enables us to use whatever he has blessed us with, we use these things for the benefits of the body. We use this for the benefit of the team members. So God intentionally plucks me out. What God does on me is that he puts me into correct order. God takes hold of me. He realizes that the mind I have, the mindset I have is wrong. So God, there's some of a holding there in my mind. God renews my heart. He gives me a new heart. And the scripture we read says that he does what? He puts his law in my heart. God forms me. God ordains me. Puts me into correct order. Then guess what? He plants me in the midst of a group of people. So let us take note of what we've said so far. God himself has promised to be with us. Jesus said he would be with us. Jesus promised us the presence of the Holy Spirit. And now that is not the only situation. What he does is that after working on us, he plants us in the body of believers. And once we find ourselves in this body of believers, we will not walk alone. And let us, Hebrews 10, 24 to 25 says that. And let us consider how we may spare one another on toward love and good deeds not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. But encouraging one another. But encouraging one another. Supporting one another. Helping one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching. By virtue of the tax we have, we, we are to perform, we are not alone. There is also a cloud of witnesses, heavenly hosts, spectators, well-wishers, predecessors, supporters. Hebrews 12, 1 says this, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily besets us, and let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us. So we are told that there's a crowd there. There's a cheer crowd. I can imagine that team, Liverpool, that I was talking about, on the field, trying to uh, uh, score their goals and whatever, with the crowd cheering and saying that you are not alone in that field. Yes, 11 of you are down there, but we are all here. We are singing and cheering you on. Just go on. There are people who are cheering us. I keep saying that heaven is looking down on us. Because, look, he's given us everything and he expects us to do the job. Apart from that, there are some people who are dead and gone, who are languishing, uh, who are suffering wherever they find themselves. And they wish some people would go out there and do something on their behalf. They are also in this crowd. Then there are also those who are within, without our walls, who are in Macedonia, who are calling, come, come and help. Come ye to Macedonia and help. Let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Knowing that there is this crowd over there. And we should look unto Jesus, the altar and the finisher of our faith. We should know that someone is out there using, urging you on. You should know that there is someone there who is, who is hoping that you will make it. You are not alone. You would never walk alone. Urging you on to serve and urging you on, they are giving you great motivation. Motiv motivation. I remember something that happened 40 years ago. 
40 years ago when I was in secondary school. I know, I want to mention one of my good friends then, somebody who supported me in school, DQ, he's here. And he would not remember this. But I was lined up in a race with some, some people. And we were going in batches. And my batch had their turn. I look around and I realize I can beat everybody there. So I was very confident. Then somebody moved from the second set and came to join. Changed with somebody. And I knew that guy. I can't stand him. So I was shaking. I wanted to move to the, to the other side so that we'll be moving back and forth. And, and DQ told me this. He doesn't remember. He said that TV, Kelaya Obayele. Go with him. You will beat him. In fact, I knew. This is somebody I knew would beat me. But when he said this, I don't know, some confidence came over me. I'm saying that we are surrounded by a crowd of witnesses. A crowd of witnesses. People who are cheering us on. Your parents, your friends, your ministers, your siblings, your children. Who are hoping that you will not fail in this tax. So we went on our marks. And when I heard the gun, I fell ahead of this guy. All I heard was noise at my back. Before I realized I breasted the tape. I came first. That was the only race I won in all my life. And this gentleman came and said, that, no, we should go again. I said, no, we'll not go again. I have won. It's settled. It is finished. But I just told you this so that you will know what motivation there is to us. What the crowd there is to us. We should not just expect others to be there for us. We must also be there for others. So that we can edge them on. This provision could be yours if you open your heart and yield to Jesus. You only walk with him if you belong to him. If you are among the party, but if, not, if you are not a part of it, you would have to walk alone in these challenging times. But for the believer who is listening to me, I urge you to press on till you finish the race. Do not give up. As long as you remain connected to Jesus, you will never walk alone. And because he's with you, you receive the needed support. You receive the needed help. You receive the necessary encouragement to live a life that is worth the call. What shall I say then? Beloved, therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. God bless you. Shall we bow our heads even as we pray? What a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, our faith lifting. What a privilege to have. Again, what a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our saints in Greece.
formed a word created a separation if only you could tell him that you are sorry Father cleanse me and wash me from every sin make me whole again can we ever find a friend that is so faithful if only we can find him seek the Lord while he may be found Call on him while he's near. He's near you. Call on him. And as you call him, he would answer. He would answer. He would be your friend. He'll be your friend. As the Lord we bring before you, as many as are willing, as many as are suffering. Father, meet each person at the point of the need. Those that think they are walking alone, may you just show yourself even in their lives. May you reveal yourself even unto them. May they realize that you are by their side. And even as they, oh God, walk with you, may they join the chorus to say that, yes, indeed, I know I'll never walk alone because you are with me. I'm grateful to you, Father, even in Jesus' name. Amen. This is coming to you from the Tema Joint Church, and it's in touch with TJC. We take the second verse of 329. That was going to be our closing hymn, but somehow the Spirit of the Lord has picked it up already. So we take the, there's the second stanza, and that will be our closing hymn. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. After which we call Canon to give us the benediction.
into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Show love to everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing from God Almighty, Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit rest with you this morning and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Beloved, the service has come to an end. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.